Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at some emulation on the all new Aya Neo Next. Now this is actually the Aya Neo Next Advanced. I was lucky enough to get my hands on a prototype unit and I've already made one video on it showing off the PC gaming performance. I ran some benchmarks and things like that. So if you're interested in learning more about this device, I will leave a link to that video in the description, but this one's going to be dedicated to emulation. Now, when it comes to the handheld itself, I think they've done an amazing job with the design. And one major feature that's been added to the Aya Neo Next, which is pretty awesome for a handheld device, is the analog sticks and the triggers are actually using Hall Effect sensors. So we no longer have to worry about analog stick drift and we just get a much more smoother experience when it comes to the triggers and the analog sticks themselves. So before we jump right into the testing, I did want to give you a quick refresher on the specs here. For the CPU, we have the Zen 3 Ryzen 5800U, 8 cores, 16 threads. We've also got built-in Radeon 8 graphics up to 2000 megahertz, 16 gigabytes of LPDDR4X RAM at 4266 megahertz, a 2 terabyte M.2 SSD, a 7 inch 1280 by 800 IPS display, and this happens to be running Windows 10, but you could always install Windows 11. They're also going to be offering a Pro model, which actually comes with 32 gigabytes of RAM instead of 16. But in my opinion, I think 16 is more than enough for a handheld like this. So in this video, we're going to be testing out some PSP, some Dreamcast, some PS2, PS3, Wii U, original Xbox, Xbox 360, and a few others. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. We're going to start off easy here with Dreamcast. And going into it, I knew we'd had good luck with this. I'm using the Redream emulator. I've only gone up to 1280 by 960 because our screen is a bit limited here at 1280 by 800. But if you wanted to do HDMI out on this, you could go up to 1440p with this emulator here and it's going to run just fine. And by the end of the video, I will show you a little bit of upscaling with Dreamcast, PSP, and PS2 over HDMI. I also wanted to test out some Sega Saturn. I'm using Yobasi and Shiro. First up, Panzer Dragoon, running great. We're at 60 and we're only pulling about 14 watts out of this unit using the RetroArch version of Yobasi and Shiro. I've got one more Sega Saturn game to test. This is one I always like to throw in because it does give uh, these APUs a run for its money. And that's Sega Rally Championship. And as you can see, this does jump up from that 14 watt TDP up to around 18 with this game because it does take a bit more to run. Moving over to PSP using PPSSPP, 3x resolution, Vulcan back in. This 5800U has more than enough power to run basically any game at full speed. I did test out some harder to run ones like Midnight Club and Kill Zone, and we got amazing performance, just like you're seeing here with Chains of Olympus. PS2 is another one that works really well on this device, and we're only at 720p because of the screen's resolution, but I'm using PC SX2 with that DirectX 11 back in, Soul Calibur 3 running at 60. I haven't had any issues with all of the PS2 games that I've tested, but I haven't upscaled past 720, and like I mentioned, we will do that by the end of the video, because running this over HDMI is totally possible, and I think we can go much higher with that res. So when it comes to 3DS emulation on these Ryzen APUs, the new 5000 series has been doing a much better job than the old 3 or 4000 series. And with the 5800U, it is possible to play these 3DS games now. This uses the OpenGL back in, and with Windows, we just never really got great OpenGL performance out of these Ryzen APUs. But at 1x resolution, it's looking pretty good. We do get some dips here and there. But you know, when it comes to 3DS emulation, I've always had much better luck on Intel integrated graphics and Nvidia. But with the latest version of these APUs, we are getting much better performance with the Citra emulator. And I suspect it's going to get better. Hopefully they do implement Vulkan soon because that would really help out and we'd be able to upscale. Moving over to some original Xbox emulation using CXBX Reloaded. We have Jet Set Radio Future and I do have to turn the sound down, uh, at least in the game itself, due to copyrighted music. 
but I'm getting great performance with this emulator on the 5800U and the Aya Neo next. One game I always like to test with this and the Xbox 360 emulator known as Xenia is the Forza franchise, but for some reason with both of these emulators recently, especially on AMD APUs, I've run into a lot of issues getting those games up and running. It could be Forza 1, 2, up to 4, or even Horizon. I'm just having so many issues with both of these emulators and the Forza franchise. But other than those games, everything's actually worked really well with the CXBX Reloaded emulator here on the Aya Neo Next. Now when it comes to Xbox 360 using the Xenia emulator, I've always had much better luck with NVIDIA GPUs, even the 1650 can run this game pretty decently. But with integrated Radeon graphics, I've really never had great luck with this emulator here. On the higher wattage desktop APUs like the 5700G, I can get this to run at 30, but on the 5800U and the Aya Neo Next, we're only at about 14 FPS with Red Dead. Checking out some Wii U emulation using SimU, we have Bayonetta 2, Vulcan back in, got those async shaders going, and when it comes to this emulator, I've had really good luck on these Ryzen APUs. Even the 2400G with a nice little overclock can run most of this stuff at 60. It's just a very well optimized emulator and it's getting better and better, and especially if you have good Vulcan support like we do with these Radeon integrated graphics, you should get really good performance with a lot of this stuff. Now when it comes to a game like Breath of the Wild, 30 FPS is really where it's at on these APUs, but it's still really playable even at 720p. And finally, we have some PS3 emulation using RPCS3. Now this really does take advantage of those extra cores and threads, but it will pull a lot of wattage from this handheld. As you can see, we're up there at the 35 watt mark here, and it can go a bit higher. I can actually run this handheld at about 43 watts, and that does help out, especially with the harder to emulate stuff for PS3, like Skate 3, but at 35 watts, it's doing much better than I thought it would. Every once in a while, I get a dip here and there, but I'd say PS3 is pretty playable on this device, especially the easier to emulate stuff. So when it comes to the built-in screen, we are going to be a bit limited on upscaling our favorite retro games just due to the resolution, but we can always go HDMI out, USB Type-C to HDMI adapter, that's what I have here. If I go into my settings, I'm actually running this at 2560 by 1920 really nice little upscale, and it definitely does make a difference with these Dreamcast games. So yeah, if you want to do some upscaling on an external monitor, you should have no issues at all with the easier to emulate stuff. Dreamcast, PSP, and I think we can even do it with PS2, but let's move over to PSP real quick. Here we have Midnight Club 3 Dub Edition. This is a harder one to emulate if you've ever tried to do it on a lower end device, you know how hard it can be. But with this, we're at 5x resolution, and I'm using the DirectX 11 back in. No hacks whatsoever. And I'm actually going to see if we can go up to 8x with it. We'll just change this to 8. Not sure if it will. But yeah, it actually looks like uh, worked out pretty well. We're pulling about 25 watts out of this 5800U, but we are at 60 FPS with this. And finally, we have PS2. So this is Ratchet and Clank going commando at 1440p, DirectX 11 back in. It does look absolutely amazing, and unfortunately, trying to go up to 4K with at least this game here, I was running into a few hiccups here and there, so 1440 or 2K is really where it's at when you want to upscale on this unit. So in the end, when it comes to emulation on the Aya Neo Next, I had a good feeling we'd have really good performance with it. On the Aya Neo Pro with that 4800U, we also got some pretty impressive performance, but we've got that 5800U in here, which uses that Zen 3 architecture, and we should have an uplift, you know, clock to clock when it comes to those older 4000 series chips. 
So like I mentioned, if you're interested in checking out the PC game performance and some benchmarks out of this little device, I will leave a few links in the description, but that's going to wrap it up for my emulation video. Really appreciate you watching. Had a lot of people asking about this, so I figured I'd go ahead and get it out of the way. If you want to learn more about the INEO Next, I will leave a couple links in the description. If you have any questions, let me know down below. And like always, thanks for watching.